Hello wonderful people, it's Genevieve and in this video we are going to draw a watercolor monarch butterfly in Procreate. This video is totally beginner friendly but it is a little bit longer, so make yourself comfortable, grab a cup of tea, hot chocolate, coffee, whatever you're into, create a new canvas in Procreate, and let's start drawing. I will be using the Ultimate Watercolor Toolbox, which includes a bunch of really cool things such as Procreate brushes, a pre-textured file for Procreate, as well as transparent watercolor splotches. I will link it in the description below along with a promo code just for you if you want to check it out. But if you're not looking to get a watercolor effect to your butterfly, you can just use your favorite Procreate brushes and follow along the tutorial, no problem. The first thing we are going to do, well in my case I'm just going to do a little switcheroo of my examples here. But you're going to create a new layer because we're going to sketch the general size or the general shape I should say of the butterfly. So pick a nice dark color, you could have whatever, just to make sure you, that you actually get to see it on the canvas. And you're going to select a sketching brush that you know you like. If you have the Ultimate Watercolor Toolbox, go ahead and select the coloring pencil. And sitting on a fairly small size, you're going to sketch a quick plus sign here in the middle. And you're going to divide the lower part or the lower branch um, of your plus sign in two. And the side branches, you're just going to quickly mark just two little sections here at the end. You're going to then sketch a inverted V type of shape, just like this. And from the little marks that we put on the horizontal branch, we are going to kind of connect the lower V ends to the little marks that we just created. And so you can see we're sketching the lower or the bottom wings of the butterfly right now. To sketch the upper wings, start from the middle of your plus sign and just extend a curved line like this that you are then going to connect, oops, you are then going to connect with the outside part of your horizontal line. You're then going to do the same thing on the other side, so curved line here, and then you connect it with the outside of your plus sign. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to color in the wings. So create a new layer by clicking on the plus sign here, and you're going to pick a nice bright orange color. If you have the watercolor toolbox, pick the dark edges watercolor and making sure again you are on your new layer. Just go ahead and, oh that's way too small, <laughs> um, go ahead and color in the wings. So you don't have to worry too much about, you know, the sketch, it was kind of a guideline more than anything. And you don't have to worry about the colors overlapping at all. I'm just going to put my example here above everything, because um, that's going to be <laughs> a bit easier. Once that is done, you're going to add a little bit of color variation because if we zoom in here, we see that the center is a bit more red and the outside tends to be a bit more yellow. So we're going to do that really easily and at this point you can hide your sketch layer too. We're going to do this by selecting the selection icon here and setting on a freehand and you're going to draw an ellipse here in the middle that you are going to feather around 50%. You are then going to select your adjustment panel here and select hue saturation brightness. And you're going to shift the hue towards the left, which is going to make it a bit more red. You're going to lower the brightness and up the saturation just a little bit. So now you see you have something that is a bit more red in the middle. And we're going to do this step again, but making it a bit more yellow towards the outside, like I said. So go ahead and select the selection tool. <laughs> And this time you're going to have a bit of a squiggly type of shape, focusing mainly on the inside of your, or the outside, I'm sorry, of your butterfly. And this one you're going to feather around 30%. Again, going back to the adjustment panel here, hue saturation and brightness. You're going to this time move the hue towards the right a little bit. So around 52%, nothing too crazy, or 53 maybe. Lift up the brightness quite a lot, and you might have to lower the saturation. Okay. 
Wonderful. Click again on your selection tool. And now you see you have some sort of a really cool color variation happening within your shape. If you do have the ultimate watercolor toolbox, I highly recommend the next step because it just makes it look really, really cool and special. If you don't, go ahead and skip uh, to the next step. What we're going to do now is we're going to add some extra splotches to make it look like the watercolor kind of bled a little bit outside of our shape. And to do that, go ahead and create a new layer on top of the color layer. And we're going to access the PNG splotches that are included in the Ultraviolet Watercolor Toolbox by clicking on this tool icon here. Select Add and Insert a file. You're going to have to locate the Ultimate Watercolor Toolbox on your iPad. So making sure you are in the Browse section here, you can type in uh, Watercolor Toolbox and it should show up in your files or your folders here. So go ahead and click Splash PNG. And you are going to to pick a splotch that you like the shape of. The color doesn't matter because we can totally change it later. So let's say I like the shape of this one. It's going to import and it's going to be pasted straight on your new layer that you just created. And then you're going to kind of move it around and place it somewhere that looks good. Obviously you don't want to place it somewhere that looks bad. But you kind of want it to bleed a little bit outside of your shape just like this. You are then going to change the blending mode of your layer. So clicking on the N here, you're going to change it to Linear Burn. And going back to the adjustment panel here, select Hue Saturation Brightness again. And you're going to shift the hue until um, it is something a bit more orange or yellow. So you might have to play around with sliders a little bit. You're probably going to have to lift up the saturation and brightness a fair amount. <laughs> so play around and see now I have something that looks yellow. So the color of the original splotch doesn't matter as much as uh, you might think. You might want to reposition or change the position a little bit. And we are then going to rename that layer splotch just so we don't lose it later. Awesome! Once that is done, we are going to add some black uh, shapes to our butterfly because right now it looks a bit strange. So go ahead and create a new layer here. And I know this step might seem a bit intimidating because there are a lot of details, but don't worry, we're going to do it uh, one step at a time and you'll see it's super easy. So go ahead and select a nice dark brown, like very, very dark brown color, almost black and select the Dark Edges watercolor again. You're just going to outline the two top wings, just like this. And then you're going to also outline kind of the outside half of the bottom wings, just like that. I'm going to move my example a little bit, sorry about that, there we go, great. You're then going to thicken these outlines that you did, so bring them inside a little bit. Just like that. Same for the bottom half, just thicken a little bit. And we're then going to create a new layer and draw the body. To do that, go ahead and draw some sort of a triangular shape here, as well as an oval, just like this, or kind of a rounded rectangle, I guess. And then the stretch out shape just like this. Going back to our wings outline here, you're then going to lower or make the size of your brush a bit smaller. And what we're going to do is we are going to draw the uh, little shapes. So start with one upper wing and draw an oval here in the bottom part. 
You're then going to draw another oval shape towards the top. You're going to draw one in the middle of the two you just created. And one in the middle of the top two. Just like that. You're then going to fill in oops, the little gaps here. which should leave you with a orange band here that you can just add some smaller ovals here in and fill the side with black. Don't worry about the colors overlapping all weird here. We're going to totally fix that later. So we're going to do the next or the other side, I should say. So again, lower ellipse here in the bottom. Other ellipse here, one middle, and one in the middle, top two. Oops. Come on. <laughs> there we go. You then fill in the gap, leaving some sort of a um, section on the top. And that section, you add some ellipse in four or five I would say and you fill in the gap don't worry if the two wings are not the exact same that is what we want if we wanted to be the exact same we would have used a, um, a reflection or symmetry tool I should say we're then going to draw the shapes for the bottom wing so go ahead and make your brush a little bit smaller and the first thing we do is um, from where the body kind of part connects to the wing or the tail part here. Go ahead and draw a line that connects with the end of your outline here. So from where the body connects to the tail kind of part to the end of the outline. You are then going to create another line that is a bit curved towards the, the, um, the upper side and that splits the wing in the middle. Just like this. You can thicken it a little bit, this one. And between these two, we are going to oops, draw another line that is curved again. Just like that. We're then going to add a curved line here, kind of where the two, the upper wings and the bottom wings connect. And finally, we're going to add two little oval shapes like this, and then split in what's left in different little sections. So that was the hardest part of the tutorial. Now we just get to make everything look really, really good, because it looks a bit weird right now, <laughs> but bear with me. <laughs> so what we are going to do is, uh, well, in my case, I'm going to move it around a little bit, um, so I'm just going to select all my layers by swiping them toward the right using the arrow tool here. I'm just going to move it a bit lower in my canvas. Wonderful. So go ahead and select your outlines here that you have, so the black outlines, and swipe the layer towards the left, which is going to give you a few options, including the one in the middle that is called duplicate. So go ahead and duplicate your layer, and what it does is basically just kind of creates a copy right on top. And by clicking on the end here, we are going to lower the opacity of that new duplicated layer uh, around 65 or something like that. And we are then going to merge these two copies of the outlines together. So grab two fingers and just squish them together, which is going to create just kind of one layer from the two that we created. We're now going to kind of deal with these um, funky overlap colors here. And the way to do that is, if you have the Ultimate Watercolor Toolbox, grab the water drag brush. If you don't and you're just using regular brushes, just select this um, blending tool here. And you're going to go over the overlaps to blend them. It creates some really cool color variation, as well as kind of softening, softening the originally super hard edges. So I'm going to fast forward a little bit because there's no point in you watching me <laughs> blending all these edges. 
Once your edges are blended, what we're going to do is we're going to stretch the shapes a little bit to make them look um, a bit more organic. So in your main shapes here in the upper wings, you're just going to start in the middle or something like that and drag the end towards the center. Just like this. And so you see, it makes it look a bit less like it was kind of uh, cut straight. And you can do it with the small shapes here at the top as well. The bottom wings are a bit more delicate and intricate, so I don't I don't really do that stretching part as much. Maybe a little bit towards the center here, but I'm not really going to touch these um, outer parts. Once that is done, we're going to add the beautiful white dots, which, believe me, this is going to make such a big difference in your piece. It's just going to look incredible. So to do that, create once again a new layer on top of everything, so on top of the body as well. And oops, pick a nice almost white color here. And we're going to use a brush that comes with Procreate in the painting section, wet acrylic. And you're going to set it to fairly small size. We're going to start by adding some dots on the outside of the lower wings. So just add some round little shape kind of thing following the curve of your lower wing. And they don't have to be the exact same size, all of them. You want something that is a bit, again, organic because like a butterfly is a living thing. And most of all, this is a watercolor butterfly. So watercolor tends to have a mind of its own sometimes. So you want to have something that is um, not perfectly symmetrical. So once you have one line of dots, on both sides of the lower wings. You are going to add a second line. And what I like is to overlap it a little bit. Like some dots are just on the black, but some like you see here, kind of connect R and R over both the black and the orange. So we're going to do that on the other side as well. And finally, we're just going to, once we have these two kind of rows, we're going to make it up um, a bit more funky. So you can kind of go and add dots outside the rows to kind of complete the look and making it feel a bit less polka dotty and more natural. And we're going to repeat the process, um, but slightly different way for the top wings. So go ahead and start by adding two dots here at the top, kind of in the corner of the wings. And we're then going to add a few along the edges, but not as many as um, in the bottom wings. And you kind of want to spread them out and have them look a bit more funky. We're then going to add two longer ovals, almost lines, here in the middle and add two or three dots um, above that line. You're then going to add two little ellipses just right here and you can then kind of decorate this boring black part by adding a few more dots where you feel like your butterfly would benefit them. Awesome! We're now going to add a little bit more details to the body because right now it's a bit um, black and plain. <laughs> so go ahead and select your body layer here and you can move it around if you want a little bit if you notice that it's not exactly where it should be. <laughs> So we're going to start by, still with the same brush and the white, we're going to add two dots on the side here. Just kind of mimicking the fake eyes pattern that the Monarch Butterfly have. And then we're going to add a series of three vertical dots along the side here. 
we're going to draw one little line that kind of helps define the end of the body. So it's kind of a reflection or a light effect basically. And we're going to do that on the lower part here as well. So go just draw a quick line here. We're going to finish the body by adding two straight lines here where the head connects with the body. And also going back to a watercolor brush, the thin intense watercolor this time, going back to your dark color, we are going to add the antennas. So just two little thin lines like this. And you can add some kind of dots here in the end. Um, that looks pretty cool sometimes. Before we add the final touches, which you're going to see are going to make a big difference, we're going to tweak the shape a little bit because, you know, we went fairly quickly, especially me and my example. I didn't want this tutorial to last for three hours, so I just kind of <laughs> did a rough shape. Um, but we're going to tweak the shape of the wings a little bit because you see they're a bit more round here as opposed to being way pointy and nice. And the way to do that is you're going to select all your wing, wing layers. So, again, by just kind of dragging them towards the right, you're making sure that they are all selected, so maybe not the splotch, but your dots, your outlines, and your main color. And going in the adjustment panel, you're going to select liquify. And what the liquify tools is, it basically is a way for you to move the color on your canvas without having to redraw everything. So look at the example that I created first, or Google a picture of Monarch Butterfly to really have a good reference. And then kind of move your color around to get something that looks a bit more optimal. <laughs> so in my case, I'm just going to increase the space between the two top wings here in the middle. Important thing, make sure that your um, liquify tool is set to push. None of the other little funky things here, so set it to push. Sorry about that, I forgot. That is very important. <laughs> so by using the liquify tool, I'm just going to push the color around, increasing the space between um, the two top wings, like I said. And I might even extend the edges or the points of the two top wings towards the outside a little bit. Maybe drag the point where the bottom wings and the top wings connect towards the center of the butterfly. And finally, I'm going to make these bottom wings a bit more square because right now they're quite round. But again, that's totally up to you. Maybe your initial sketch was perfect. Like I said, I went kind of quickly so you guys didn't have to watch this tutorial for three hours um, <laughs> but that's solely a way to fix an artwork that you know you might see some things you don't totally like um, without having to start over. I'm also going to add a bit of texture or cool shapes here in the bottom wings by using the push tool again and just having some sort of indents um, in my shape because monarch wings tend to not be super round in the bottom. They kind of have some funky, cool shapes. So quit the liquify tool. And I'm going to add hide this small example here. And what we're going to do now, if you've watched any of my tutorial in the past, you know this is my favorite step. We're going to add the salt brush. And to do that, we are going to merge the splotch layer with the basic color layer. So again, two fingers, you just squish them together. And selecting the salt brush, starting from the outside, so from a blank space of your canvas, towards the inside, just drag your pencil around. And you can see it adds some really nice white, white little speckles, which is cool way to add some texture to your piece without having to actually <laughs> create them individually. We're also going to add some splatters, so this time go and uh, between the body and the white details, create a new layer. Select your bright orange and the splatter brush. And doing sort of a S shape on top, 
go ahead and add a little bit of splatters. You can also change the color to be a bit more of a yellow so you have some variation within your splotches. And finally, we are going to change the blending mode of that layer to linear burn. So click on the N here and change it to linear burn. And what that does, it basically just kind of uh, blends in the splotches on top of the collar a little bit better. So you just see them better. So that is your completed Monarch Butterfly. I would love to see what you guys created, so make sure to share them with me on either Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Again, I will link the Ultimate Watercolor Toolbox in the description below along with a promo code. If you like this tutorial, make sure to give it a thumbs up, and if you have an idea for a tutorial you would like to see, comment below. I will make sure to add it to my list. And finally, make sure that you don't forget to subscribe because I put out new videos every week.